The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to phase five of our revision for advanced level mathematics. I'm called Chair Samuel Wang. For our revision today, we will be revising coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry, circular functions, circle geometry, vectors, complex numbers, and matrices. Coordinate geometry. The distance between two points is given as the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. This distance between two points, we can equally use this, this relation if we have the point x1, y1, x2, Y2, the distance V can also be the same as here we have X2 minus X1, we can equally have it as X1 minus X2, all that squared plus Y1 minus Y2, all that squared. The midpoint of a line. The midpoint of a line is the value of the x coordinate, the value of x in the x coordinate plus the value of the second value of x divided by 2. That is, we have x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2 to get the midpoint of each of the, the coordinates. Division of a line in a given ratio. For internal division, we have to get the x value, we have m of x2 plus n multiplied by x1 divided by m1, m plus n. And for the y value, we have it as m multiplied by y2 plus n multiplied by y1 divided by m plus n. If the division is externally, to get the y coordinate, for external division, we'll have it as m, x, m multiplied by x2 minus n multiplied by x1 divided by m minus n. And the y, the y coordinate will be m y2 minus n y1 divided by m minus n. The gradient of a line. The gradient of a line is the change in y divided by the change in x. Remember that the gradient of a line can be positive or it can also be it can also be negative. Once we draw a line and it is from left to right, 
the, the middle of that line will be negative. If it is from top right to bottom left, then the gradient is positive. What are we saying here? Let's look at this situation here. If we have a line drawn like this, this is your y-axis. The gradient of a line, this line here, huh? let's call it L1. If we look for the gradient of this line, the gradient is negative. If we have the line, now let's call it L2, Y, X. The gradient of a line, of this type of line, is always positive. To look for gradient of lines, we need to know, once we draw our line, we should be able to know whether our gradient will be positive or negative. Acute angle between two lines. The angle between two lines is that the acute angle is tan alpha or it can be tan beta or tan theta is equal to the absolute value of the gradient of the first line minus the gradient of the second line divided by one plus the product of the two gradients of the lines. Take note here that the denominator, which is one plus the product of the gradients of this line, should not be equal to zero because once it is zero, then you will not be able to find the angle between this line. That situation will be all defined. Perpendicular distance d of a point p of a line. Perpendicular distance of a point p of a line. If we are given a line, like what we are seeing on our screen, let's take for instance that we have this line. That is the line ax plus by plus c equal to zero. And now there is a specific point here, p, or let's call it a, with coordinates e, q. The distance of this point A from this line is obtained using the formula that we have on our screens there. When you have D is equal to the absolute value of what is our x value of this point? Our x value there is T. That is why we have A plus B plus C divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's why we have this is the start of a from this line here. Second geometry. The general equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. Take note of this general equation of a circle. Once we are dealing with circles, it is very important to always take this general equation first. And then you start asking yourself, the question is all. Ask yourself the question how to handle the second problem. Here we have x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. This equation, once we are given any equation of a circle to handle, we need to compare it with this general equation so that all the other uh, Maybe we are looking for the center of the circle or the radius of the circle, we can now obtain them easily. For the center of the circle, with this having this equation, you have the center C to be negative G, negative M. So if you solve your problem, if you solve the equation on the top on circles, and you make the result of what you have was negative for G and negative for F. 
then the center of the circle now will become positive values. We we'll have positive values. The negative will come in okay, okay, with this, and now the group of two negative gives us a positive value. Then to get the radius of the circle, the radius r is equal to the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c, where c is a constant in that equation of the circle. Now, we may draw circles. And what are the effects? We may have a circle, two circles for g, Externally, all the two circles may touch internally. What happens in this situation? For external touch, for external touch, when we have two circles, C1 and C2, touching externally. C1, C2, these two circles are touching externally. Let's say for the depth, for the set, for the circle C1, it has center A D. And for the center C2, we have it as X1. Now you see that. These two centers, if you look at them, it will give you a straight line. So what is the distance? How will we look for the distance between two points? We saw that in coordinate geometry, the distance between two points is given as, so the distance between C1 and C2 is equal to the square root of, we have it as A minus X, all squared, plus D minus Y, all squared. When we look for the distance between these two centers, and having obtained the radius of each of the circles, let's call the radius here to the R1 and here R2. If the distance between these two centers is equal to, is equal to the sum of their radius, then the two circles touch externally. For internal torch, if the distance between the two centers between the two centers is equal to the absolute value of the difference of the two radius, then those two circles touch externally. Matrices. Any rectangular array of numbers used to represent information. Any rectangular array of numbers used to represent information. The order of a matrix. The order of a matrix. This order of a matrix is very important for us to know the order of a matrix in order to know if we can multiply two matrices or not, because once it is not compatible for multiplication, we can't multiply two matrices. So we need to always first take the order of any matrix we are working with. How do we get the order of a matrix? Let's assume that we have the matrix and we equal to A1, A2, A3, D1, D2, D3, now, the order of these matrix, the best thing is we count the number of rows first. So how many rows do we have here? This is one row, two rows, so we have one, two rows, and then the columns, one, two, three. So this matrix is a two by three matrix. We can equally have a matrix T equal to A1, A2, A3, D1, D2, 
C3, C1, C2, C3. In this case, the order of this matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix. Identity matrix. There are other types of matrices. We have a rectangular matrix, a square matrix, a color matrix, a row matrix, and we can match as many as possible. But why are we looking at the identity matrix? The identity matrix is one of the most important matrices that most often we need to use it. The matrix we buy from the model, the identity matrix we buy from the model is from a 3 by 3 matrix. We can equally, we also have a 2 by 2 identity matrix. And a 2 by 2 identity matrix for a 2 by 2, i is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. If you observe for an identity matrix, all the entries there are equal to 0, except those of the leading diagonal. All the entries there are zero, but for the elements of the leading diagonal, we are all one. Transpose of a matrix. The, when we interchange the positions, that's the rows of a matrix to become now the column of the matrix, we obtain a tra the transpose of that matrix. That is, I thought you were on the board. Or we can equally have another situation where we have something like this. So D equal to 3, 2, 1, 4, 5, 7. This transpose then. This transpose then. Now we have to take the row, the best row, to become now the best. Column. When you have it as three, two, one, the second row becomes the second column, and you have it as four, five, seven. This is the transpose of the matrix B. Matrix cofactor. Matrix cofactor. At the advanced level. It is very important that we should know how to obtain the cofactors of a 3 by 3 matrix. It is very important to know how to obtain the cofactors of a 3 by 3 matrix. Let's consider the matrix that we have above there. Let's consider the metric that we have above there. And how can we obtain the each core factors? Now, A. A1, D1, C1, A2, D2, C2, A3, D3, C3. We want to look for the core factors of A1. The cofactor of A1. We have to ask to get the cofactor of A1. What happens? As now at A1, the elements of this column, we are not going to use them. This here, we are not going to use, and we now have to the that of this D2, C2, D3, C3. Now, with this, we have to be very careful with the signs. And an easier way to get the cofactors of a 3 by 3 matrix is to write this matrix four times. If we write this matrix four times and take the determinant of a pair of 2 by 2 matrices, that is, we have A1, D1, C1. A1, D1, C1, A2, D2, C2, A2, D2, C2, A3, D3, C3, 
Now, now we need to take Pelas power. This, this is a two by two matrix. When we take out the determinant of this, we obtain the first cofactor. Again, we move and take the next pair. Again, here. You see, we are working with two by two, instead of two by two matrices. When we take this, we get the next cofactor. Again, we can take this and this. We take this and this. That's another set. This and this. We have this and this. This set gives us the first four factor. This set gives us the second four factor. This set gives us the third four factor for the first row. You come now to get the four factor of the second row. You take now again. This set will give us the best four factor. This set. We give out the cofactor of the second row and the last again in this row we have this to obtain the next cofactor. And now we take out the last pair of square matrices. If you do that, you obtain the cofactor of this matrix. Determinant of a three by three matrix. Scalar should be taken here because when we be looking as we be looking ahead, you see the importance of knowing how to look for the determinant of a three by three matrix. You are going to use it in vectors to look for. The cross product of two vectors. How do we look for the determinant of a three by three matrix? How do we look for the determinant of a three by three matrix? If we have the matrix A there, A equal to the matrix A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. A3, B3, C3. The determinant of the matrix A is equal to, we begin with the first element A1. We so have A1, the determinant of, we eliminate everything in the first row, first column, and we are left with B2, C2, B3, C3. Now we look for the determinant of this and we multiply with A1 minus the determinant. Now we are done with minus B2, B1. Determinant. This column is eliminated, this row is eliminated. And we are done with A2, C2, A3. C3 plus C1 the determinant. This column is eliminated. The first row is eliminated. And we are left with A2, B2, A3, B3. And that is how we obtain the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix.
aggregate of a three by three matrix. It is a transpose of the co factor of its co factors. You see, before coming to the determinant of a three by three matrix, we will talk how to obtain the co factors of a three by three matrix. And that is how you use it now to obtain the aggregate of a three by three matrix. Once you have looked for each four factors, you simply now take the transpose of the, the four factors to obtain the aggregate of that matrix. Inverse of a matrix. The next thing is the inverse of a matrix. The inverse of a matrix denoted. That is the that is that's how we denote the inverse of a matrix. The inverse of a matrix is equal to one divided by the determinant of the matrix A multiplied by the aggregate of the matrix A. The determinant of the matrix, the aggregate of the inverse of the matrix A. That is A inverse of the standard of A multiplied by the aggregate of A. The aggregate of a 3 by 3 matrix. It is the transpose of its co factors. The inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix is denoted by A to the power negative 1 is 1 divided by the determinant of A multiplied by the aggregate of a. Properties of the inverse of a matrix. Any matrix multiplied by its inverse gives us the identity matrix I. That is A multiplied by A inverse is equal to I. Or A inverse multiplied by the matrix A. This part, R. Any matrix multiplied by the identity matrix gives us the matrix A itself. Singular matrix. A singular matrix is a matrix whose determinant is zero. That is, if we have the matrix A, and we look for its determinant, if the determinant of the matrix A is equal to zero, we say A. Is a singular matrix. All singular matrices don't have any inverse. Solving system of equations by matrix method. We look at using three unknowns. We first need to express the system of equations in the form Fx equal to n, where n is a 3 by 3 matrix, x and n are 3 by 1 matrices. That is, if we have, say, a system of equations, say, a1 x plus b1 y, plus C1, Z equal to B, A2, X plus B2, Y plus C2, Z equal to your A3, X plus B3, Y plus C3, Z equal to A, to so express it in the form fx plus c, we simply copy our equation of x, y, and z, and now we have it as 
A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3, multiply by X, Y, Z, equal to B, your arm. And mark the arm, and X equal to N. Before we now proceed, the first thing to do after expressing it in this form is to find the index of the matrix N. After obtaining the matrix, the matrix index N, we now pre multiply both sides by the index of N. That is, now the next level to be N. Index multiplied by n, x will be cos equal to n index n. When we multiply any in matrix index by the matrix itself, we obtain an identity matrix. So we have i now multiplied by x equal now to n index of n, and i multiplied by x gives us x. And now when we simplify this, n Inverse n, we will obtain the values of the unknowns in the equation. Alternatively, we can equally use the grammar's rule. And how do we get about the grammar's rule? If you find on your screen there, you have, you have there that x is what we D of X on D. What does this mean? D of X means the determinant of X. And how do we get D of X? D of X, let's come here. What we do to obtain the determinant of D of X is we take up all these elements here and replace them with this. So we are going to have now the determinant of we have B, Q, and B1, C1, B2, C2, B3, C3. When we look for the determinant of X, we have D of X. And our D here is the determinant of this. Matrix. We have seen how to obtain the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix above. The same will apply for x for y equals to d of y. So for d of y, we are going to replace the second column by d, q, and r, and look for the determinant. And for z, we do say we take that, replace the third column, and look for d of Set. X equal to pi theta one, 180 degrees. That is how we can convert from degrees to radians. Trigonometric functions. If we are given a right angle triangle and to find sine, cosine, or the tangent, the ratio that we find on our screens. We simply now apply them. The first thing is we need to identify which side is opposite to the angle we are dealing with, which side is adjacent to the angle we are dealing with, and which is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always opposite to the angle 90 degrees. The side facing the angle that we are, that is the point of reference, is opposite to that angle. Like what you find on your screen, AB is opposite to the angle theta. BC is adjacent to the angle theta. And the sine ratio is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent on the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And cosine is one on sine. Sec is one on cos and cotangent is one on Tangent. 
if we take the sign ratio, the cosine ratio, and apply this, we get those relations that you have seen on your screen. The sine and cosine rule. The sine rule. The length is used to obtain the length of the side of a given triangle, which is not a right angle triangle. Now, to obtain the length, we we'll have it as the side A, which is denoted small a, opposite to the angle at A, is A on side A equal to D on side D. It is A on side A equal to D on side D equal to C on side C. And not what you are seeing on the screen. The cosine rule. The cosine rule, a squared equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2b c cos a. General solutions of trigonometric equations. Suppose sine x is equal to a constant value. The principal value is theta equal to sine inverse of that constant value a. And a must lie between Limited one and one. If you draw the sine curve, if you draw the sine curve, you find it that the sine curve turns at it turns at one and also at limited one, having the maximum value of one and the minimum value of limited one. So to get this general solution, it is limited one. Negative one, negative one, the power n, theta plus one, eighty degrees n. It can be written in either you have one eighty degrees n plus negative one to the power n theta, where theta is the angle we have obtained, and that angle is called the principal value. And in radians, you have it as you see on your screens. For cosine, you have it as what you see on your screen. And now the difference with cosine is that it is now 360 degrees plus or minus the value of theta. And for tangent, you have it as 180 degrees and plus theta. Pythagorean identities. These identities are very important because we use them most often in solving problems in trigonometry. And the first one there is cos square theta or sine square theta is equal to 1. And from the, the first identity, the other identities can be proven. The half angle identity. Suppose t is equal to tan x on 2 sine x is equal to 2t on 1 plus t squared. The best way of always recording this is if you can draw a right angle triangle. And let's call this angle here x. Now, I see side x is 2t on 1 plus t squared. And here we have 1 minus 2 minus t squared. So much so that you cannot obtain any of Sine, cosine, or tangent. Not what you can see on the screen there for tan x. Tan x is tan x on two. Then what tan x, sorry, tan x will be equal to that is opposite. Opposite of our adjacent. So you have to ask two t. Divided by 1 minus t squared. Not only as seen on the screen. Compound angle identities. The sine of A plus or minus B is equal to sine A plus B plus or minus sine B plus A. With compound angle identities, you need to be dealing with cosine in particular. 
What happens is the time now a plus cos a plus or minus b is equal to cos a plus b, and the reverse process now is a take space. So if you have cos a cos of a plus b, you either have it as cos a cos b minus. So take care here not to make the error of using plus there because for sine the sine moves along. If it is positive, it is positive. But for cosine, the sign changes. Tan, tan A plus or minus B is given as that, like what you see on your screen. Transforming A plus theta plus B sine theta to R plus theta plus alpha or R sine theta plus alpha. A plus theta plus B sine theta equal to R plus theta plus Alpha, we can now express it in that case. What you see on your screen is not correct. A cos, A cos, A cos that, A cos, theta cos, B sign. Express in the form R cos theta plus alpha is the same as R cos theta cos alpha minus R side theta side alpha. Remember that I want that you need to be careful with the side when you're dealing with cosine. Equating coefficients here, we'll be able to obtain the value of R as what you see on your screen, R, alpha, like what you see on your screen. Factor formula. These formulas are found inside your formula booklet, so you need not bother much memorizing them. Vectors. A vector is any physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. The position vector of a point B, A, B, C is OP is equal to that, as you see on your screen. Now we are dealing with vectors in three dimensions magnitude, direction ratio, and direction cosine. If we have the vector B, to be that, the magnitude of B is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. That is the value of the unit vector in the X direction squared plus that of Y plus that of the Z. And the direction ratio is A is to B is to C. You are using the coefficients of the direction of the various vectors. The direction of cosine is A, of course, alpha is A on B, the modulus of that, that's the magnitude, cos beta, cos gamma. Magnitude of the resultant of two vectors. That is how you obtain it. As you see on your screen, the dot product, the dot product of that is u dot b equal to that. You find them inside your formula booklet. Where theta is the angle between u and v, and f is a unit vector perpendicular to u and v. Parallel and perpendicular vectors. In the dot product of two vectors is equal to zero, then the vectors are perpendicular. Parallel vectors. Two vectors are said to be parallel if one is a scalar multiple of the other. Equation of a line passing through a point. The vector equation of a line passing through a point with direction vector 
is given as r equal to the position vector plus a scalar multiplied by the direction vector. r equal to the position vector, which is a, plus lambda multiplied by the direction vector. If it passes through two points, we need to look for the position vector of a relative to b, and we can use any of the points. We can have r to be equal to o, ob plus lambda ab, or r equal to ob plus lambda ab, as you see on your screen. Parametric and Cartesian equations of a line. From the vector equation of a line, r equal to a plus lambda, multiply by the direction vector, if r is a vector, space x, y, and z, then with a given as what you are seeing on your screen and z the direction vector, to obtain a parametric equation, we will have it then as what you see on your screen. You see that we are using the x, for x we have the x, the, the x value of the position vector plus lambda, the i value in the direction vector. And it follows through for all, for x, for y, and z. And the Cartesian equation now is, we simply take each of them and transpose them, making lambda the subject. Pairs of lines. The lines L1, given R1 equal to A1 plus Z1, L2, R2 equal to A2 plus mu Z2, D1 and D2 are the direction vectors of those lines. At the point of intersection, the first line will be equal to the second line. That is why you have R1 equal to R2. And the angle between this line will be the dot product of their direction vectors divided by the magnitude, by the magnitude, the product of the magnitude of the direction vectors. Plane is the equation of a plane. Given the normal vector n and the distance d of a plane from the origin, r of the normal is equal to the magnitude of the normal multiplied by the distance from the plane. Given the normal vector and at a point with motion vector A on the plane, then the equation of the plane is R multiplied by the normal vector to the plane equal to the motion vector A multiplied by the normal vector to the plane. And we have three points, given three non collinear points on the plane A, B, and C, the normal vector is the cross product of A, B plus B, C, A, C, sorry, A, C. Well, we know how to look for AB and we also know how to look for AC. And we will have the equation then now as R dot the normal vector equal now to OA dot the normal vector. Complex numbers. We have been talking most often at other levels with natural numbers, and now we have started off now with other forms of numbers, the complex number. Like what you see on your screen, any complex, any number, where you have it, any equation where you have it as z equal to a plus b, where i is equal to the square root of negative one is a complex number. All complex numbers always have conjugates. And the conjugate is the opposite of the complex number itself. When we did the rationalization of cells, we saw how to rationalize cells by multiplying it with the conjugate of that cell. That knowledge is equally applicable here when we are dealing with complex numbers. So the complex number of z, the conjugate of z, denoted z bar. A guy is denoted z bar or rather than it is equally the, co the complex conjugate of a given complex number. And the modulus is simply the 
the modulus is the square root of a squared plus b squared. That is the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. The principal argument of z is given as theta is equal to tan inverse of b on a. That is the y component divided by the x component. And it always lies between 180 degrees and less than 180 degrees and 180 degrees. Polar form of a complex number. If the modulus of z is r and its magnitude is theta, z is equal to r cos theta plus r times i sine theta. The, the modulus theorem. If z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sine theta, then z to the n is equal to r to the n into cos n theta plus i sine n theta. And the nth root of z is equal to r to the 1 on n into cos 2, uh, 2 pi k plus theta divided by n, n theta plus that as you find on your screen. We have come to the end of revision for phase 5. We will be right back, we will continue with revision questions for this phase. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Polina Lovalunga in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Revision questions. Multiple choice question, paper one type. Write down the letter corresponding to the correct answer for each of the questions. Question one. Then we have to carry out multiplication. As you see on your screen, if you multiply the matrix there on your left, you obtain five, one, three. And the correct answer there will be D. That we did multiplication of matrices in the first cycle and we have been doing it during our normal lessons. So that should, shouldn't be a problem. A circle of center 2, 3, touching the x axis at the point 2, 0, the equation of the circle is this is the sense in this question. This is the x axis where this circle touches. And now the center is at the center is at 2, 3. And you look at to eliminate the radius of this circle, you see that it will give you the corresponding y value here of this circle will give you the radius of the circle. It will give you the radius of the circle. So how then do you now operate the equation of a circle? You simply now 
substitute it inside. The equation of the cycle. What will happen as the equation of the cycle will happen then now as x minus the corner of x at the center square plus y minus 3 plus square. Three below the reduce, what was r square? And our r square is 3. And what are we going to have there? x minus 2 square plus 1 minus 3 square is equal to 9. So, as you can see, the correct answer is D. The tangent of the acute angle between the lines, why go to that? The first thing is we need to know the gradient of each of the lines given to us. And then we substitute inside the equation, which we saw in the revision part of coordinate generation. If we have the line y, 4x minus 3, y equal to x minus 5. For this line here, we all in the first cycle, we have that the equation of the two lines is equal to mx plus c, where c is the intercept. The gradient of this line here is that one will have it as 4, and here the gradient is 1. And if you substitute it inside the formula, you have the value of the value of the angle to be 3 on 5, which is c as you are seeing on your screen. Given the complex number that we have one, from i, z, minus three, plus i equal to zero. The value of z in the form a from b and y a b is the first thing is we need to make give the subject of this equation. And what are we going to have there? We we'll have it at 1 plus i compared by z is equal to 3 minus i. We start both sides by 1 plus i, 3 minus i, 1 plus i. We now simply Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of this denominator, I will have, we we'll end up having our results to be 1 minus 2i. And the correct answer there is C. Paper 2, essay type. Given that, given that equation there, Now we are given that, we are told that, given that 4 minus 3i divided by 2 minus i, z minus all that 1 plus 3i equal to that. Express the complex number z in the form a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers. We need to make z to have a real part and the imaginary part. So by transforming that and making z the subject. So the best thing there is, we have to take 1 plus 3 I to the right, which will have 4 minus 3i or 2 minus i, z equal to 1 minus 2i plus 1 plus 3i. And now we add that we will have it as 2 plus i. And here we make z now the subject. So we have z now to be equal to 2 plus i multiplied by 2 minus i, all that are 4 minus 3 i. We first simplify the numerator before multiplying it with the conjugate of the denominator. 
And in that case, you see that we are going to end up with that, like what you find on your screens, that the end result will have z to be equal to 4 on 5 plus 3 on 5i. So your a will be 4 on 5, and your d will be 3 on 5. Question 2. The vector equation of two lines L1 and L2 are given by that. Find the position vector of the point of intersection of L1 and L2. B, the cosine of the acute angle between L1 and L2. In having this problem, the first thing is we need to rearrange the equation of the lines. We need to rearrange the equation of the lines. Which for the first line, rearranging it L1, we are going to have it as 13 plus 3 matter R plus 4 minus 8 matter J plus 11 minus 6 matter K R2 will have it as 5 plus 7 mu I plus 22 minus 17 mu J plus 9 minus 5 mu K. A point of intersection. R1 B1 R2. So we now be with there and you have 13. If we look at this here, you have got 13 plus 3 than that will be equal to 5 plus 7 mu. And we are doing this. We will have it as 7 mu minus 3. But that is equal to negative eight as one. We take the next, we compare them again, we we'll have four minus eight, but that is equal to twenty-two minus seventeen. We are making it again, we we'll have twenty new minus eight, but that is equal to 18 as a question 2 and the third. 11 minus 6 lambda equal to 9 minus 5 mu. I don't think it will have it as 5 mu minus 6 lambda equal to negative. Two. Now, if you use any of the two, if you take any two equations and solve, we we'll get the values of we we'll get the value of yes. If we take any of the two equations we we'll have, we we'll solve any two of these equations, we we'll obtain the values of lambda and mu, and solving them, we we'll have mu to be equal to 2 and lambda is equal to also 2. You can use any of the, the equations to solve to obtain the value of lambda and mu. After that, they want to find the point of intersection with this value of lambda and mu. We go back to our equation you can for lambda you substitute in equation one, for mu you substitute in equation two in this second line. If the two values have the same position vectors, then the two that is the point of intersection. And if we substitute, we will see that all of them will end up giving us 
minus the part minus twelve J minus K. And now we the position vector of the point of intersection. The cosine of the acute angle. Now, what you have on your screen there, lambda multiplied by that gives us 3i minus 8j is minus 8j minus 6k is the direction vector of the first line. And the second line, its own direction vector is 7i minus 17j minus 5. We look for the modulus of this direction vectors, as you see them on your screen there. For the first line, we are going to have it as the square root of 109, and for the second one, we have 368. Now, you look at the third product of the direction vectors. That is multiply the position, the, the, direct, the direction, multiply the, the direction vectors. That's D1 and D2. And you multiply that, you end up having 187. And we now simply just use our relation that we have that the cosine of the angle is the third product of the direction vectors multiplied by the product of the magnitude of the direction vectors. And that is what you can now go back and simplify this. Question three. Express cos x plus root three sine x in the form r cos x minus lambda, where lambda, where r is greater than zero, and zero lambda lies between zero and pi or two. We saw this one with three circular functions. We saw this one with three circular functions. We have it as cos x plus three. So three sine x. That's expressed in the form r cos x minus lambda. Opening up the right hand side, be careful again here. This is cosine, and we have here minus. So opening this will have a positive value sign now. So we have it then now r r cos. X cos lambda plus R prime X prime lambda. Now we, we now the first we compare the left hand side and the right hand side. We see that cos X is equal to R cos X cos lambda, which implies we have divided both sides by cos X will have one is equal to R cos lambda and we have a three times x equal to r sine x and lambda which implies root three is equal to r sine lambda to the ground two if we square equation one square well, plus equation two squared we we'll have it as one squared is one plus with three squared is one plus is three plus one gives us four, and we have it as r squared into two squared lambda plus five squared lambda. This two squared lambda plus five squared lambda is one. So much time like this, we have it as four now is equal to r squared, which gives us r is equal to plus minus the square root of. 4, which gives us r equals to plus or minus 2. When the condition is r is greater than 0, which means therefore that our r is equal to 2. Now, we take the next thing we need to uh, obtain the value of lambda. If we divide equation 2 by equation 1, equation 2. That by equation one, we are going to have r times lambda over r plus lambda is equal to root three over one. 
which one have then tan lambda is equal to root 3 and lambda is equal to tan divided by root 3. Remember that when we are choosing 10 degrees and 60 degrees, we said we can easily obtain these values using this our small triangle 60 degrees, 30 degrees, root 3, 2, 1. What is tan? Tan is opposite of our understanding. I am adding root 3 and 1 is opposite of our 1, which gives me 60 degrees. So our lambda is equal to 60 degrees. They are talking of giving your answer in terms of pi. So we need now to convert 60 degrees to pi, and 60 degrees is the same as. Sixty degrees is the same as sixty degrees in radians. Sixty degrees in radians, we will have it as sixteen of pi by one eighty degrees, which is pi over three. So our lambda is equal to pi or three. So then of course x plus root three. Okay. is equal to our uh, r is 2, 2 cos x minus y over 3. We have expressed it in that form. We have been asked in the question, what is the question again there? Now to find the general solution. How should find the general solution of that when it is equal to root 3? Now we have got this. So, what are we going to do? We now take what we have obtained in terms of R and look for its general solution. And we have a little bit the cosine function. So, we have it there now as 2, of course. X minus y over 3 is equal to root 3. So therefore, cos of x minus y over 3 is equal to root 3 over 2. And x, x minus y over 3 is equal to cos inverse of root 3 over 2. And root 3 over 2, cosine is, cosine is, Cos root 3 and 2 from our triangle again. Root 3, 2. Root 3 and 2 is equal to 10 degrees. So x minus 5 and 3 is equal to 10 degrees, which is equal to 5 on 6. We have to ask. X minus 5 on 3 is equal to 5 on 6. The general solution the general solution of course is X equal to plus or minus the primary value plus 2N5. And from there now, what is our x here? We have now x minus 5 on 3 is equal to plus or minus and common value is 5 on 6 plus 2n5. So leaving us with x now to be equal to plus or minus 5 on 6 plus 2n5 plus 5 on 3. And from here, we can always obtain the values of x with we know n and so on. And that you have your general solution. We have come to the end of this revision phase, and our next phase will be on calculus.